Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews, the show where we bring you up close and personal with some of Canada's most exciting and vibrant communities. My name is Christopher Brown, and I will be your host for this exciting journey. Over the course of this series, we'll be sitting down with local elected leaders from across Canada to learn about who they are, what drives them, and how they are working to make their communities better for everyone who lives and works there. Now, we believe on this show, shockingly, that the best way to understand a community is to talk to the people who actually live and work there. So that's why we are so honored to have our guest onto the show today. Please help me welcome Mayor Rob Belay of the town of Athabasca in the province of Alberta. Rob, welcome to the show. Thanks for, thanks for having me. So, Rob, I'm going to ask the million-dollar question to start all my interviews. You're no exception. Where'd your sense of duty to serve come from? Well... Um, you know, I've always been heavily involved in, in, uh, in the community, uh, you know, raising my family in the area. Um, uh, you know, I always coached hockey and baseball. I was always part of uh, organizations, um, you know, uh, and then on top of that, I actually worked for the, for the municipalities for 34 years in various, various roles. So I have a, a pretty unique perspective and, and, uh, I guess a lot of background that that actually serves uh, serves me well now. So, and um, you know, I also served on uh, the Athabasca University's Board of Governors for six years. So there was a a, a good governance experience there. And uh, initially, after I retired in two thousand and fourteen, I decided, well, I need a break. So I did take four years off, and. Uh, but then uh, I decided to uh, get back into, um, you know, uh, get back into action and 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 serve as a, as an elected official, and um, you know that was in 2017, and so I served one one term on council and then I ran for mayor and so far I've been uh, about a year and a half into into that role so. I hope that wasn't too long winded. <laughs> oh God, that, that was short compared to some of the other answers I get, but I want to unpack a few things that you just talked about there. And I want to start with this municipal politics is the frontline politics of all levels of government. You are the front line that people deal with the most and you are the front line of politics. When you make a decision, things change the day after it happens. For you, what was it about the draw to going into municipal politics in 2017? Because you could have chosen federal, you could have chosen provincial, but at the end of the day, you decided municipally would be the best way to give back to my community. What was that decision based on? Well, there was a couple of things. You know, uh, one thing growing up, my dad always, you know, drummed into us that, um, you know, as much as we get out of our community, you know, we also have to invest in our community. So, you know, I had a good role model there and, uh, you know, he was heavily involved. Actually, my brother uh, was an elected official for the Athabasca County. So that's uh, kind of been, been in the family as well. And uh, I don't know if you remember uh, back in, in 2017, there was um, the council of the day struggled with, um, with getting along. And, you know, the community actually uh, got a, a petition started and um, got a municipal investigation into the council at the time. So, you know, a bunch of us thought, got together and said, well, you know, maybe we should serve and, and um, you know, try and turn this thing around. So that was an, another factor. And uh, you, yeah, you are and not the only mayor to tell me that because I just recently <laughs> sat down with the mayor of High Prairie, Alberta, Brian Panasichuk, and he yeah. said the exact same thing. There was a few people who got around and said there's a municipal inspection happening in 2013. We yeah. want to change the way that the municipality is perceived and how it act interacts with its residents. Was that similar for you? Uh, yeah, it was right, and you know, as it as it turns out, we ended up with a complete new council. Uh, was uh, you know, and and the mayor as well. Although the mayor was a previous mayor that ran because uh, they came back as well, um, sort of wanting to you know get the the ship back on on track. And so we ended up with uh, six six new councillors that had never served before, um, and 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 a mayor. So. It was uh, it, it was exciting times, but uh, we had a really good council that, that that first council, and and our council now is is awesome. So 
We, um, you know, we agree to disagree, but we leave, when we do disagree, we leave that behind us and move forward with the decision that's, that's made. And, and we're very good at that. Now, you're a unique councillor slash mayor. You're in the position of mayor. But when you were first elected as a councillor, you're in a unique position because you've been on both sides of the council table mm-hmm. now. You've been behind giving reports to council and you've been receiving or presenting uh, reports to council. I want to know about your the perspective that you brought to this position as councillor and as now mayor with the background of working for the municipality, now being an elected official of the municipality. Well, that's a, a, good, a good question. Um, you know, well, I think it's just that in, in helping other councillors understand what is being presented to us by administration, uh, you know, by going through that and actually sitting on, you know, in the in their chair at the time, I think I, you know, I can um, not, you know, just explain their perspective and the reasons why, um, you know, they're asking for what they're asking. And, you know, so I think that was, that was really important. Uh, you know, it's about relationships. So, uh, you know, I went through that. So I, I know what it's like. So I, you know, I draw on that as well. And, and on top of that, in my last years as serving, um, you know, for, for the two municipalities, it was actually, I managed all the jointly owned recreational facilities between the, the you know, two elected groups, the Athabasca County and, and the town of Athabasca. So that was even um, uh, more of a, you know, a, a little different where you had, uh, you know, it's split 50-50, but you have different ideas and I'm in the middle managing that. and you know, trying to, um, steer, you know, steer, steer it so that it's, it makes everyone happy. So I think does, all of that really, re- re- really is, uh, is an advantage at times. Does it give a unique perspective of what the administration is able to accomplish being a person who's had that experience? Because I'm assuming during your time as administration, you probably thought to yourself, why is council asking me to do so much more with so much less? <laughs> And now never you're once, the, never, never once. once. Really. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm, <laughs> of course, you absolutely. So does, that, right? does that give you a unique perspective to look at both sides and say, okay, I know as former staff of the town what we can do and what we can't do and what we can ask our administration to do. But now as council, I have to look at it from both perspectives. How do we serve our community, but also how do we serve our community with the staff and service levels that we can potentially provide from a staffing level? Exactly. I I could speak firsthand that I knew that we were, you know, uh, we run very lean staff wise. Where, you know, so if you bring, you know, sometimes people come on council and they think, uh, you know, I'm going to change the world. And then when they find out what that world is really like, well, that, that, you know, they have a different perspective as well then, right? But yeah, you know, that's, that's very true, right? So, and that was a good thing, a good thing to draw on. And and on the other side of that, I think, you know, sometimes, you know, you, you want to, you want certain leadership from council. And, you know, when that leadership wasn't there, now I know that, uh, you know, maybe I can provide what was missing before because of the experience I went through. And so I, you know, I I try to do that to to a large degree. I want to talk about election 2017 for a second, when you first decided to put your name forward for councillor. For someone who worked in the town, who who had just retired a few years earlier, I, I'm going to say that you had a pulse on your community. You kind of knew what the needs and wants of your community. But during an election, when you're out door knocking, talking to people to get, get garner their vote, you hear about micro issues, about potholes, about health care, about education, about this, that or the other. When you were talking to your residents going back to elections ago and even in 2021, did you hear more micro issues about things individual people are feeling or more macro issues? Like the town needs X, the town needs to deal with healthcare, the town needs to deal with education. What were some of the issues that you were presented with at the doors in those two elections that you've ran in? Well, I, I think we got presented by with both cases, uh, but I would say the majority was more micro. And and really? I think you find, I, I think you find that more with, um, uh, you know, with municipal governance over uh, provincial or, or, or federal for, for that matter, right? 
because um, it's it's more grassroots, uh, quite frankly. And uh, it's it's not like, um, you know, when I talked with businesses, you know, they didn't want to know what we were going to do, you know, to bring more development or or uh, what we're going to do to sustain, you know, the the businesses and the governments or and, and the, the businesses and, and the um, that we have, you know, um, in uh, already existing right so there so there was that but i mean a lot of it was the 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 level of service that we were being provided um and we, you know actually that was um we did provide a pretty good level of service um you know we, we were um in the process of building a new pool onto our new uh, our multiplex that we built in 2008 and so that was part of the issue as well as you know those that um um you know, were in favor of that, or maybe, you know, didn't want to spend, have that investment. And and my stance was that, you know, we got to have these facilities to attract people and to, to retain people. And for the, for the, for the majority of our community, they, they agreed with that. And in hindsight, I think it was one of the, you know, the best things we ever do. It, it, it's a, it's a big burden uh, operationally wise on us, but um you know, we, we just hosted uh, the U18 uh, provincials here this last weekend. And there was so many combat, they, they couldn't believe that a community of our size has the facilities that, that it does. Um, you know, and, and, and we have, so it's good to hear those kind of things. You know, once when you were sort of, you know, pushing for it, I was actually the, the design chair for the pool at the time. So, oh, wow. um, and, uh, you know, we have two anchor employers. Uh, we have Alpac and we have uh, Athabasca University. So we've got to make sure that, you know, we have um, a community that people want to uh, live in and stay in. So I think it's, you know, that's, that's a municipal responsibility and elected officials responsibility to, to make sure our community has those, those attract those things. Election night 2020, 2017 is a unique experience because I'm living in Northern Alberta at the time. So I'm following along with a lot of these uh, different elections that are going on. But for you, you were on the ballot going in on ballot day on election day and casting your vote uh, for mayor and councillors, which you are one. What was that experience like seeing your name on that ballot for the first time and putting that X or that check mark beside your name? Was it a surreal experience for yourself? Yeah, it was. And, I, you know, I, and I have to admit, you know, until you actually run for elected official and and it, it you are a little bit anxious, right? Because, you know, even though you're out campaigning and you hear good things, you don't know for sure. Until, what? People uh, live camp- there? What? What? People Never. will lie? To- Never. No. Uh, so, but as it turns out, I, I, um, no, this doesn't, I, I don't want to sound like this is braggery, braggery, bragging or anything, but I, I did receive the most votes as a, as, as of all the councillors that, so it made me feel, feel good. You get elected. There must be a celebratory moment in your life when you say I've done it. All the hard work I did during that came, uh, campaign has paid off. But now the real work begins. Now the actual day-to-day operations, the day-to-day decisions that you make are going to affect the people in your community. How much weight and responsibility do you put on yourself each time you walk into that council chambers to make sure you are informed and educated on the issues that are presented in front of you? Well, I take it very seriously. And, um, you know, that was one of the things, I, I think one of the most important things that any individual who's going to consider running for, for office is that you, you, you need the time to, to make sure that you do your research so that you're going to make the most informed decision that you can when it's time to, you know, say yay or nay. And, uh, you know, I was willing to do that. I had the time I was retired. So, um, you know, I, I knew I, I, I was ready to, to, to serve. And, and then on top of that, when I decided to run for mayor, I thought, you know, I really believe that it, you do. You can be so much more effective if you serve one term on council prior to be to to, to leading 
And um, so I wanted to make sure that, because a lot of people wanted me to actually run for mayor the, the first time. And I said, no, I said, you should serve as a counselor first before you, 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 you go that next step. So why do you I'm think that I is? That. Why do you think that is? I'm going to challenge you on that because I, there's a lot of people who will just run for mayor and they, they may be good mayors, but why do you think it's important for people to run for, be a counselor before they're a mayor? Well, I, cause I don't think you really know what you're getting into. So I think that's, that's, it's, you know, I think a lot of people that come on that have never, uh, you know, served, um, you know, not necessarily in, you know, under a municipality or, or have worked for a municipality realize all everything that it takes to, to, to make, to make things work. And that's no different than, uh, you know, as, as, as a mayor, right. Uh, and I think it's even more important uh, in, in smaller uh, communities, uh, you know, maybe in a larger center, you can get away with it because you have so much more support staff administratively and, and that, but that's not the case necessarily in, in, in smaller communities, right? Um, you know, if we're much leaner and, um, and, and you got to know your stuff. So that's, so I would, you know, not to say that someone can't do a good job. I just think it's, it's a real benefit if you have that as well. My last question on this sub segment before we turn to the town of Athabasca is this. You are the frontline, as we said at the beginning, of the frontline government. You're not in Edmonton doing your job. You're not in Ottawa doing your job. You get elected and you are in your community 24-7. How have you found the balance of work life and personal life as being mayor? Because this is, I'm assuming this is not a full-time job. Even though you are retired, it is not a full paid job. Like you are not getting to, uh, like paid as Edmonton or Calgary is. But you are working around the clock. You are lobbying, you are advocating, you are doing day-to-day -day, uh, outreach with stakeholders, you are meeting with uh, residents. Have you found a work-life balance where you can just go to the grocery store, pick up a jug of milk and come home without having to deal with residents or talk to residents about their issues? That, uh, that doesn't happen. <laughs> when, you, when, you go, when you go to the grocery store, you're going to... Uh, you know, you better be prepared to, uh, that it's not going to be a, a quick trip. Sometimes it might be, but most times it's not. So, and, you know, and, and I knew that going in, so that, that wasn't an issue. Um, you know, I, I'm lucky enough. I have se seven grandkids. So I, I, I make sure to make it a priority that, uh, uh, I spend, you know, as much time with them as, 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 I, as, as needed or, you know, as, as, as we can get. So, uh, but that being said, um, I mean, uh, there is a lot. If, if I mean, I, I I was a little surprised in in how much um, lobbying efforts that um, we went through, and and part of that was 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 what we was were going through with Athabasca University and stuff. But and that was you know sort of above and beyond. But um, you know you're always there's always opportunities to meet with ministers and 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 you know plead your case versus uh, health care and 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 uh, you know obviously we want more money as municipalities for our infrastructure so and um and you know i i i enjoy that so um you know i i i'm i'm happy to do that on on behalf of our community I want to turn to segment two because I'm cautious of time here. And I want to preface this question by saying this. This is a conversation between the mayor and myself. This is not a motion of council. This is not a direction of council. This is not a policy of council. This is his opinion. Mayor, in your opinion, what is the biggest issue facing the town of Ath Athabasca or issues facing the town of Athabasca as of recording this episode? Well, I think probably like most rural communities uh it's it's long-term sustainability um you know slow you know economic growth uh our community has has actually been receding in, in population uh a little bit the last few years and so you know as a council we're trying to um do things that can turn that around like what so, 
Uh, well, so some of the things are, you know, we've created, uh, you know, a tax, a non-residential tax incentive program to, to, to bring in um, uh, hopefully new development and also for, you know, existing businesses that want to expand their, their, uh, their operations. So, you know, that's, we've never done that. So we just passed the bylaw and it's just being introduced now. Um, we, you know, we've, we brought in a subclass to, uh, I guess, incentivize those, those properties that uh, have been sort of neglecting what they look like um, to, to get them to um, spruce up their, their, their properties. And then on top of that, if they agree to do that, then we incentive, you know, we've got an incentive for them to actually, you know, let's say there's an old uh, building that's on there to tear it down and then we'll give them incentive to build a new one. So to create development that way. Um, so, you know, I think that's probably, you know, the most pressing thing for us right now. We've, we've hired um, uh, through our, you know, regional approach, we've hired a lobbyist, a full-time lobbyist that's going to help us, um, you know, bring opportunities so that we can sell our communities to those investors. We've, we've never done that before. So, so, so we're trying some new things to try and, to, to try, to try and accomplish that. This is not a fix that's going to happen overnight. This is going to be a 10, 15, 20 year potential endeavor. Um, are you laying the groundwork today to potentially grow the community in the future? And you talk about the regional approach to it. How do you work with a region like Athabasca County and yourself to ensure that everyone sees the benefits of the growth when it comes to growing sustainably? Well, I've, actually, that's pretty easy uh, because we get along very well with our regional partners, both the okay. Athabasca County and and the Village of Boyle. Um, you know, Boyle. Meet, I always forget Boyle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, we have a uh, we get the 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 Reeve and the mayor and the mayor get together on a regular basis and, and we chat. So the relationship is good. We regularly have uh, tri council meetings where we talk about issues that that are that are regional. Um, we're, we're pretty integrated. We have a water commission, we have a waste commission where, um, you know, uh, everyone is, is um, you know, so, so they're regional things. Uh, our recreational facilities are, the costs are split 50-50. Split so we have a really good relationship. So it's pretty easy uh, to, come, to come up with a regional approach for us. I, don't, I know that's not necessarily the reason for all other municipalities and, the, and, and their surrounding partners, but for us, uh, we have an awesome relationship. What's the attitude and atmosphere like in the town of Athabasca for that sustainable growth? Because you as council have to look at growth, have to look at attraction, but I guarantee you, and I, I've been to your community a few times, so I, I, I'm not speaking out of turn here, but there's there's a bit of nimbyism in Canada, not in my backyard. I don't want development. I want the community to feel the way it is right now for the rest of my life, because that's why I moved here. How do you battle back against the nimbyism in your community when it comes to potential growth and attraction of new growth to your community? Well, I mean, you know, where we always have to be mindful uh, of, of everyone in our community. Uh, we also have to realize that we have to do what's, what's best for the greater good and the most people. And, and sometimes that's not going to be sit well with everyone. Right. So, um, you know, you know, we had a, a situation similar like that when the, you know, the Athabasca uh, Min mineral sands project was, was first developed close to town. Uh, you know, th there was, um, you know, quite an outcry with that, but we still managed to compromise and find a place for them where they could still develop. And, you know, and that's one of the new initiatives that's, that's going to be happening in our community. So uh, you have to find ways to, um, you know, to work with that, but, but in the end, the decision's gotta be what's best for your community as a whole and not, you know, for the, the few that, um, are, are in opposition. The vocal minority, as I like to call them. Yeah. And that's my words, not the mayor's. But speaking of the individual needs here, and this is kind of what this whole series is all about. How do municipal councillors and mayors and councils 
work towards the best for the community without forgetting the individual needs. Because if I go talk to a hundred people in your community today, and I ask them the same question, what's the biggest issue in your community? You're going to hear some macro issues. You're going to be here healthcare. You're going to hear policing, but you're going to also hear about the potholes. And I guarantee you, you've heard about the potholes and you're going to hear about the sidewalks and you're going to hear about the park upgrades and parking downtown or uh, economic development. You have to take the issues that the people are presenting you and look at them as a whole and then come budget time, weed through the issues that people are faced with and so kind of decide how the city or the town's going to grow in a sustainable way without forgetting the people who have put you there. How do you do that? Well, um, you know, there's a, a couple of ways that I, I, I think, you know, one of the issues, uh, especially in Boyle, was the, the closure of the emergency services in the hospital, right? So prior to that, uh, and, and, and it's a, a staffing issue, right? And, and same as in Athabasca. So, so we started a, um, a health care attraction and, and retention committee. And uh, we, got, we got pretty aggressive. And, and we've actually, in the last year, uh, managed to attract three new doctors to, to Athabasca. Uh, and and uh, some nurses as well, and and in Boyle, you know, we lobbied hard uh, with the because this is once again, you know, healthcare is, is a regional thing. It's not an, a Boyle thing. It's not an Athabasca thing. It's not an Athabasca County thing. It's heck, not, it's a provincial it's issue. For, it it should is. be a provincial issue, but municipalities it, are facing it. It should issue. be right, but uh, you know, we took it upon ourselves. You know, we're going to do something about this, and and you know, we worked with AHS. Uh, Quite frankly, I found AHS quite good to work with. So, um, and 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 we have achieved some 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 real real results. And you know, even you know, lobbying with the ministers, even in the situation in Boyle, well, you know, we managed to get uh, some international nurses. Um, we we expedited that. They're going to be here in June. They're going to take the training, and, and then that will allow those, um, you know, the the acute services and the emergency service to open again. But um, so you know that's one of the things because healthcare is is important to everyone, right? And uh, so so we did that. Um, you know, and another thing we did is is, is we imp is we implemented a clean energy improvement program for. Um, uh, our residences that they can apply for. So, you know, they can apply for, for a project. Um, we uh, provide the money for them and then they pay us back and it goes on their tax rolls over the next 10 to 15 years. With So it makes it much more affordable. It improves, um, you know, the energy efficiency and the, and, and the sale value of their property. And hopefully it employs some some uh, some people that are that are doing that work. So we we took that initiative. We're just rolling it out. We're getting our first applications in. So we're we're, we're pretty proud of that. And 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 there's other things we um, we we've done a couple of green initiatives. Like it, it'll depend on whether or not we get the grants. But we did uh, we applied for a three million dollar grant to put uh, a solar photo uh, uh, um, you know solar panels on. On our recreational facilities, oh, wow. uh, and that will reduce our yearly operational cost of about a hundred thousand dollars. So that's a good thing. We can take that money that we're spending every year, and we can use it somewhere else, right? Um, we're restoring our our our, our historic, our provincially um, designated brick school, and we're doing a, a, a three million dollar project with that as well. And uh, that's also uh, a solar and also a geothermal um, technology um, to upgrade that facility as well. So, so we're doing green things as well that that, that will have long term benefits. And um, yeah, I, I don't know. There's there, there's other things too that, but those are the things right off the top of, that, of my head that I can think of. Municipalities are have been feeling a crunch over the last few months, few years, especially with COVID nineteen with the changes of the MSI to the LGFF funding. Um, while Alberta municipalities hasn't come out with the funding for this year, as of recording this, um, there's less money in the pot for municipalities. And then on top of that, and I'm not sure, and please correct me if I'm wrong here, Athabasca probably just got a bill for the RCMP download, the retroactive pay, correct? We haven't got it yet, but we know it's coming. So you do know it's coming. So yes, this is a... 
this is a very financially constrained few years that municipalities have been feeling. Mm -hmm. How do you look at the operations of the town differently now that you know that you have some major bills and some major changes to how grants and what money you're going to be allocated from the province moving forward? Yeah. Well, you know, there's a couple things there, I guess. Um, you know, we, ju we just finally sort of got used to the, the um, you know, the increases to the police funding uh, that, that we got from the province, right? So now this is a download from, from the feds for the, for the back pay. And we don't know, I, I'm, I'm assuming it won't be a one-time hit because I think that would be really unfair. I think they'll spread it over, uh, hopefully, at least three years. Um, you know, and of course that that affects us. That's um, you know, you know, we 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 either have to make up that difference through growth, or um, you know, as I said before, we're we're a pretty lean organization. It's hard to make cuts unless we really want to cut levels of service, and I don't think our community wants that. So then, what's left? Well, we got to raise taxes, right? And there's only one taxpayer, <laughs> you know, so. Uh, but, um, you know, so, so I think that's why it's important to have a long term strategy where, uh, you know, you're not dependent on just raising taxes where you've we got to try and grow our ways out of this. And, and, and that's what we're trying to do. I want to talk about one last thing before we turn to our last uh, subject segment, I should say, and it's apathy. When it comes to federal and provincial politics, there's a big uh, engagement opportunity for people. And people like, especially, especially on social media, they like to give their feedback on what's going on federally and provincially. But when it comes to municipal uh, governments, it seems like there's an apathetic undertone. Unless my water uh, isn't turned on when I turn on my tap or my garbage isn't picked up, I really don't care what's going on in the municipality as long as my taxes are low. For the town of Athabasca and as mayor, do you see an apathetic nature when it comes to engagement from your residents? Um, in on some issues, yes, but on on other issues, like I'm I'm thinking, you know, our our last election or, or, or the one in 2017, we had 14 people run for office, which is a lot to get elected. And this last time, I think we had 10 or 11. So, uh, you know, people are stepping up to. To, to serve, um, was the electoral turnout as good as it should have been? No, um, you know, it's, uh, so it, there's, a, there is a little apathy that way. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I think our community is pretty engaged. And um, like, if you ask for the people's opinions, will they give it to you? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes they give the, they, they give it to, to me without asking. So, but I mean, uh, that's great. I mean, uh, I want our community to be engaged. That's one of the things we also wanted to focus was better communications, right? So, you know, we've, uh, we have this, this uh, app that we've put out, it's a community app. So it's called Alert and uh, we put notifications on there and, and uh, you know, that's a, 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 you know, a smaller way to engage, but, we, but we're trying to engage our community uh, more than we, than has been done in the past. And I think that's important. Because that Perfect. fights apathy. It does. And it fights back misinformation as well. It does. I want to turn to my last segment. Uh, and the last segment is my favorite segment here because I love tourism. I've said, if you come on my show, I'm coming to spend my economic dollars in your community. So get ready to see Chris Brown up in Athabasca later this year. So awesome. Mayor. What are some of the hidden gems that if my viewers and my listeners are listening right now and saying, I want to go tour Northern Alberta and maybe I'll stop in Athabasca. What are some of the hidden gems and tourist destinations that they should see in your community? Oh, wow. Um, we have so many, uh, you know, I guess sort of the most obvious one is we have one of the, the, the biggest rivers flow right through the middle of town. Right. So our whole riverfront uh, development is, is pretty awesome. Uh, you know, you can come and spend a day there with your family. We have a spray park for the kids. We have a huge playground. We have a skateboard park right on the riverfront. Uh, we have a stage. Um, uh, we have a great place for, for just ha for, for hanging out. 
Uh, you know, we have our River Rats uh, Festival every year, July 1st. That's a that's one a big, of the best attraction. festivals I've ever been to in northern Alberta was the River Rats yeah. uh, Festival uh, a few years ago when I think it was, I was yeah. last up there. Yeah, we, we, we've had some pretty, pretty awesome, uh, you know, performers come in and uh, and, and, and it's a it's, it's a pretty rocking weekend. So, uh, you know, we have lots of we have a, a tremendous trail system uh, and we have, you know, historical tours that you can take because, you know, uh, Athabasca had it not been for the fire back in I forget what it was, 1911. It, it could have been the province of the capital of the province. It was bigger than Edmonton at that time. Oh, wow. But uh, just about the entire town burnt down uh, then. So, uh, and, and, you know, history is, has, has laid out as, as, it's, as it's happened. So, so there's, there, there's a real deep um, historic, um, I guess, component to, to, our, com to our community. Uh, you know, we have so many lakes um, that are within, you know, 20 minutes of, uh, of, 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 of Athabasca. Uh, we have over 300 kilometers of um, of groomed snowmobile um, trails, right? Uh, let's see what else have we got. Is here? there a, is there a local spot that you like to go to that you can just get away to and just decompress after a stressful day at council? Yeah. Is there a local watering hole, or is there a trail? Is there a park? Yeah, well, we have our our trail system, our Muskeg Creek trail system. So it's it's it's. A beautiful walk. It's through the valley, and the Tuatna uh, River flows through it. That that drains into the the Athabasca River. Um, you know, and and it's it, they're they're pretty uh, nice trails. We've had provincial in the in the winter. There uh, we cross country ski on them as well, right? And um, so we've had provincial loppets on it. And um, so I mean, you know, there's a few good watering holes that we sort of once in a while we go to. To unwind after council, we you know we might go have one one uh, spirit uh, and and our our golf course. I don't know if you're a golfer, Chris, uh, but we have one of the best courses in, in all of Alberta. Quite frankly, we've hosted the Alberta Amateur on two occasions, and so you know what kind of level of course it's got to be to host that, right? So, um, and it's cheap. It's pretty cheap golf. It for, is. I remember yeah. that. I remember when I went golfing there. I was like, why is it so cheap? And they're like. Just because people come yeah. so good for you and it's and it's even cheaper if you're a member if you're a member when i compare what i pay for a membership compared to what my sister pays at the glendale in the city i mean why do we get a sweet deal and we have every bit as nice of course so. um maybe you and i will have to go do nine holes uh, when i'm up there absolutely uh, give me a yes. call be more Let's than happy Let's do it. So I'm going to end on this question here, uh, Mayor, and that question is the million dollar overarching question. You can take as long as you want to answer this or as short as you want to answer this. In your opinion, what makes the town of Athabasca such a unique place to live, to work and to raise a family? Well, um, you know, I think we're pretty lucky because we have such a diverse community. Um, you know, we, there's not many communities have a university that uh, of this size that say they have a university, uh, you know, in, 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 in their jurisdiction, right? Uh, so, and, every, and that's sort of everything culturally that comes with the university, right? So, so we have that, um, you know, we have the, was the largest uh, craft pulp mill in North America, you know, and, and that supports our, our, our community as well. Uh, it's just the location and, and the beauty of, of being in a, in, in a river valley of, of, of we have that to, to offer. But most importantly, I think it's the people. Um, we're a very tight knit community. Um, I think people are amazed at how much this community gives and how much this small community uh, raises. So I'll, I'll give you one example. We had uh, this uh, our Rotary Club. I'm a Rotarian. Here's my pen. Anyways. Uh, we, we had our, our, our local fundraiser, right? Our, our, we have a fundraiser every two years. And in, and in one night, we raised, uh, through our celebrity auction, we raised over we raised $100,000 in one night of a community of our size. Wow. So we have a very um, giving community, both uh, individually and, and business-wise. So we're very fortunate. And we have great healthcare facilities. We have great um, recreational facilities. So... 
um, and I can go on, but uh, you know, in the end, it's the people. Mayor Belay, I want to thank you so much for doing this. It's been an honor to sit down with you and talk to you about the town of Athabasca and yourself. And I say this, and I say this with respect. Communities like Athabasca are better served with people like you at the council table. We need more people involved. We need more people engaged and we need more people who are willing to do the work to make their communities better. So thank you so much for serving on your council as well. Well, I appreciate those kind words and it's my honor to serve my community. And when you're in town, let's let's do nine. Let's do it. So with okay. that, I want to remind everyone, put down social media for at least 10 minutes a day and go have a conversation with somebody. Helps our society, helps our democracy, and of course, it helps us be better people. So with that, this has been the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. Have yourself an excellent day. And remember, everyone, just keep talking. Mm -hmm.